Hey everyone, Steven here with Prismatic Powders. Today, we're going to give you some tips on how to overcome the Faraday cage effect. As an added bonus, a lot of these tips can also apply to shooting tight spaces. Shooting these kinds of areas pose some of the biggest challenges coders face. But before we get started, please click on those like and subscribe buttons. It's okay, I'll wait. All right, let's get started. All right, shooting tight spaces can be challenging and even more so when the Faraday cage effect occurs. Once you know what to look for, you can predict some of the struggles you're about to face and plan accordingly. Check it. The Faraday cage effect happens inside of areas where tight corners or sharp angles meet. In simple terms, what happens is the negatively charged particles in the powder resist these spaces as they seek out their pathway to ground. It acts like a force field has been generated. Since electricity follows the path of least resistance, your powder builds up around these areas, but not in them, and it's frustrating to say the least. It's all too easy to give up and try to shoot these areas hot, but shooting hot should be the last resort. And for some powders, it just isn't an option. So when tackling these kinds of spaces, it's really important to make sure you are starting off with a good ground. Once you've established a good ground, you can apply some of these techniques. But do take note, there's not a one size fits all solution. What works in one situation may not be the best option for another, and you may need to use a combination of these. These tips should give you something to try the next time you encounter Faraday cage areas. Decrease voltage and adjust micro ramps. This might seem counterintuitive, but reducing your KVs can help penetrate the area of resistance. Some guns have a Faraday cage setting, which will adjust voltage and microamps automatically. This can work, but not all guns have a setting like this. We would recommend starting with a KV around 40 to 50 and make adjustments as needed. For microamps, we, we set them around 20 to 30 and adjust as needed. Dropping these settings is a tactic designed to keep the cloud from getting too much charge, thereby creating that Faraday effect. change tips to suit the problem area. For example, using a slotted tip can greatly assist in getting powder to lay into tight areas because the pattern leaving the gun is flattened. We've also had success switching to a conical tip at times because it made the powder cloud a bit less dense, which helped the powder settle into the areas a little easier. Pulsing the trigger is a good way to both regulate how much powder leaves the gun, but also helps keep the charge in the cloud down. This reduces the likelihood of creating the Faraday cage effect. This is especially helpful if your gun does not allow you to control your powder flow. If you can adjust your powder cloud, turning the powder down for some areas may be necessary. Adjusting your distance and hand technique is also quite helpful. We find changing the spray angle to be less direct toward the problem area helps pull the powder in. Depending on the angle and the area you are spraying, try adjusting air pressure up or down. Here's why it can help. Sometimes dropping air pressures can keep powder from being blown around or out of tight spaces. Here's an example of flow rates that are too high, resulting in powder being blown off the part. There are some spaces like tight channels where increasing air pressure may help the charged particles penetrate Faraday areas. For these kinds of spaces, start with a distance of eight to 10 inches and adjust as needed. The area you are spraying is going to be the determining factor on what you do. Try to read what the powder is doing and make the needed adjustments as you go. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and will give you something to try next time you encounter some of these problem areas. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.